I actually, I, I like using 1 John 5 where we just were because that actually shows the three in one. But one of the things I like about the way that John 1, 1 is worded, uh, is, now this doesn't include the Holy Ghost aspect, but it doesn't matter because even, you know, having, having more than one be one is the concept, right? That, that's kind of the hard thing to grasp for people. But when it says the being was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, I love the way that's, that's worded there just because you're, you're, you're getting this imagery of like, okay, someone's with someone else, but then they are someone else. You know, it's so, so you have both. So this very clearly can, can help us to see, okay, well, there's three and there's one simultaneously. You're with them. You are, you know, you're one. You're not one kind of simultaneously. It's, it's a weird concept, but you can see that, and, and that begs the question, well, how can this be, right? How is this possible? And I brought up different examples last week of, of how you can explain this, and I don't know if I mentioned this one last week. I mentioned the H2O thing and the egg and, and these other examples, but the other one that, uh, that I commonly will, will refer to people to or, or talk about is that we have a body, a soul, and a spirit, right? We are triune in, in our nature. That God has created us with body, soul, spirit. So, you know, they're not equal to each other. The soul is not the spirit. The spirit is not the body. The body is not the soul, you know. But um, they're all necessary to make up one of us, one of who we are, right? When my, when my soul is departed from my body, I mean, yes, I still exist, but I'm not, I'm not really complete, right? That's why God's going to give us new bodies at the resurrection. We're going to have redeemed bodies and bring us back into full union of being together. You know, there's going to be a time while we're absent from our bodies and we're present with the Lord, but then he's going to bring us back in union with our bodies because that's the, the state that he wants us to be in with body, soul, and spirit all together. Um, and even, even the, the res there's going to be a resurrection of, of the unjust as well, the resurrection of the damned they will be reunited with bodies as well before they're cast into the lake of fire. So every person, every human being will, you know, even though there's, there's a temporary time where you're, you're departed from your body, where everyone will be reunited with a body in one sense or another, right? Whether, whether you're in glorified body in heaven or whether you're in your damned body in hell. And these are ways, you know, when we think about that, sometimes it's easier to grasp when you could think, oh, okay, well, that's, Similar, and I don't want to say it's exactly the same, it's similar to how God could be. It could help us to, to wrap our mind around the, the great mystery of, of uh, godliness that God was manifest in the flesh. But let's keep reading here because I want to focus more in, again, on the Word. Not so much on the Trinity aspect, but on the Word. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And here's how we're going to prove the Word is literally talking about Jesus Christ. We saw the Word being referenced as being part of the three in one in 1 John chapter 5. And then as we continue reading here, the Bible says in verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And then verse 14 says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So now that same Word that we said, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. That same Word was made flesh. And it says that that Word that was made flesh dwelt among us. So these witnesses, the witness of John is saying that that Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And then he says in this parenthetical statement, and we beheld his glory. What kind of glory did that word have that was made flesh? The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 